I first started off getting very skinny and I wasn't growing as tall as my friends and stuff were. And I was like, oh, I'm, well, I'm just a late bloomer and stuff. But then after a while, I'm like, no, something's seriously wrong. He was just wanting to be home and he hurt all the time. And um, he was just fading away in front of our eyes. It felt like someone was trying to stab me with a knife through my, through my lip. And whenever I had stomach pains, it felt like I was digesting barbed wire or glass. It was, it was really bad. I mean, as a mom, you want to fix whatever you can and try to control everything. And I just couldn't. Doctors, lots of doctors. I would, call, I would call a lot and say, no, I know something's wrong. It was probably about six months, I think. And then they referred him to Children's. And uh, it was really good because we got answers really fast. When we got the news that I had Crohn's disease, I started being more down than I usually was. Crohn's is, is typically in your small intestine. So when they went in, they could see from top to bottom in his small intestine was just full of, of leisure, lesions. And uh, yeah, that explained the pain and why he wasn't gaining weight because no nutrients were getting through his um, small intestine. They wanted his um, intestine to rest and not try to digest so it could heal. And the best thing to do would be to give him a feeding tube. We wouldn't eat in front of him. He was allowed to have popsicles, just liquids, that was it. So he would have a popsicle when we were having dinner. And I think it doesn't sound like much, but we're camping and having a wiener roast or something, and he's on a feeding tube, right? So it was, it was hard to watch. It's, it's hard to explain, because it just kind of punches you in the gut. So the feeding tube was eight weeks all summer. And then they'd, we started introducing um, solid foods back in. And we cried. I'm <laughs> crying because he's eating a cracker and it sounds funny, but it was huge because he's healing, right? So, yeah. We had to go back to Children's Hospital every three months. We'd have to fly out of Smithers um, until he was well into remission. And then that's when we could start uh, coming to the outreach clinic here. The fact that Dr. Schreiber, who is his physician at Children's, comes here, it works well because then Matthew's more comfortable too. Look how big he got. I know. You're going to be taller than me. I think he might be. I see. <laughs> I'm not quite sure where we'd be without Children's, um, the knowledge that they have and just uh, making you feel comfortable and not alone. That, that was huge, too. They are always like, make sure you phone. You're not alone. You're not alone. So when those questions come up, to just be able to call and get somebody, they're good at what they do. Matthew is doing great today. When he uh, was diagnosed, he was 67 pounds, and that's three years ago this month. And now he's 160 pounds and as tall as me. <laughs> so he's been in full remission for almost a full year. We're grateful. Just all around, it was a traumatic experience, but BC Children's Hospital felt peaceful in a time of insanity, I guess.